today we will be discussing about nosocomial infections nosocomial infections are otherwise known as hospital acquired infection or hospital associated infection the patient will get infected after 48 to 72 hours of hospital admission he will be infected by the organisms which are endemic within the hospital the infection developed would neither overtly present nor in the incubation period during hospitalization and the disease will become evident during the hospital stay or at the time of discharge the nosocomial infections are nowadays called as healthcare associated infections because it can be acquired anywhere at any facilities that offers healthcare not only in the hospital the nosocomial infections are caused due to the interplay of three factors and the three factors are host factors microbial factors and environmental factors the host factors include patient risk factors that is the genetic predisposition of the patient the immunity of the patient the food habits and lifestyle of the patient then comes the microbial factors it includes the characteristics of microorganisms and finally the environmental factors it includes uh, intensive care units operation theaters equipments instruments etc the common types of healthcare associated infections are urinary tract infection bacteremia or septicemia pneumonia or lower respiratory tract infection surgical wound infection etc first one is urinary tract infection the major risk factor for urinary tract infection are the patients with indwelling urinary catheters and the catheters might be placed under poor aseptic conditions and the common infecting organisms are enterococcus faecalis klebsiella pneumonia pseudomonas aeruginosa etc next is bacteremia or septicemia the risk will be more for the patients with intravenous catheter the organisms causing this infection are staphylococcus epidermidis enterococcus faecalis staphylococcus aureus etc next is pneumonia or lower respiratory tract infection the risk will be more for the patients with impaired pulmonary clearance mechanisms or the patients with underlying pulmonary diseases or patients under ventilator assistance the microorganisms causing this infection are klebsiella pneumonia pseudomonas aeruginosa staphylococcus aureus etc next is surgical wound infection the chance of getting surgical wound infections are more when patient is under a prolonged surgical procedure and the microorganisms causing this infections are escherichia coli enterococcus faecalis staphylococcus aureus etc moving on to the sources of healthcare associated infection mainly three sources endogenous sources cross infection and environmental sources the endogenous sources are the most common type of source the infected microorganisms will be non pathogenic under normal conditions however when there is an underlying disease or when the patient is undergoing any kind of invasive diagnostic and therapeutic procedures the microbe will get activated that is they will reproduce spread and localized and will infect the patient next is cross infection the cross infection can be by direct contact that is direct contact between the infected patient and another individual uh, mainly through saliva respiratory secretions patient's hands etc next is air that is the dust from a fabric that carries the patient's normal microbial flora then hospital personnel other sources are environmental sources it includes hospital air usually the hospital air will be harboring many bacteria that are pathogenic and will and those are resistant to multiple drugs then surfaces the surfaces which are contaminated by patient secretions excreta blood body fluids uh, then animals insects etc then inanimate objects usually this inanimate objects get contaminated by by patient secretions by the hand of healthy or unhealthy hospital personnel visitors etc 
Next is the modes of transmission of healthcare associated diseases. They are aerial route, oral route, contact route and parenteral route. Finally, to the measures to control these infections. First one is standard precautions. Standard precautions are the minimum or basic infection prevention practices that we apply. That is, it will be performed regardless of suspected or confirmed injection infection status of the patient. And the standard precautions include hand hygiene, proper hand washing, uh, then proper use of gloves, proper use of masks, then proper use of personal protection equipment, safe injection practices and proper handling of the shafts, then environmental cleaning, medical equipments, respiratory hygiene and proper isolation of the patient. Next is biomedical waste management. Here we should use color coded bags for infectious, non-infectious and genera general waste. That is we will use separate bags, separate color coded bags for uh, disposing infectious, non-infectious and general waste. We should use puncture proof containers for handling sharps and needles. Then as a pre-treatment we should autoclave the infectious waste before disposing. Then deep burial and incineration of the appropriate hospital waste is done. Next is precautions in operation theatre. Proper aseptic measures should be adopted. Next is investigation and proper follow up of the disease outbreak. Finally, monitor and regulate the healthcare associated infection that is mainly through HICC that is Hospital Infection Control Committee. And that was a brief explanation about nosocomial infection. Thank you.